G'day Virtual Pilots, it's Requiem. In today's video, we're going to look at how to restart the Messerschmitt 262's engines while you're in flight. It's important to know how to do this because if you're too abrupt with the throttle, you can inadvertently cause a flame out, and if you don't restart the engine correctly, you'll end up causing an engine fire. So in order to do this, we're going to cause a flame out in the left engine by pulling the throttle back very quickly to the idle position. So as we go down to the left throttle, we pull it back quickly, the engine will flame out, then we'll see the fuel selector valve go to the cutoff position. Once it does this, we're going to hold the ignition switch in for 5 seconds and pull the throttle all the way back to the cutoff position. This will help prevent the engine suffering damage during the shutdown. So now that we're flying on single engine, we're going to bank slightly towards the operating engine and trim accordingly to split the ball. I'm also going to need to add some nose up trim as well because we're going to slow down to about 300 km per hour before we begin the restart. So before you attempt an engine restart in flight, you should try and meet two criteria. The first one is that you need to be below 4000 meters, as engine restarts above this altitude could cause a fire, and your airspeed should be about 300 km per hour. You can attempt restarts outside of these criteria, but I can't guarantee that they'll work. So when you're ready to perform the restart, the first step you're going to do is press and hold in the ignition switch for the affected engine. So we do that, that'll kick off the process of restarting, and we're going to see the EGT increase. This is going to tell us that the engine's starting to go. So we give it a couple of seconds, let the RPM stabilize. Then we're going to very, very slowly increase the throttle on the affected engine and monitor the EGT at the same time. Ideally, you'll keep the temperature below 650 degrees, but you can go up to about 900 degrees without necessarily causing an engine fire. As we increase the throttle, the goal is going to be to increase it so we can get to that idle position. We'll see the click. It comes up. And now we can release the ignition button and begin increasing the throttle so we can match the RPM between the left and the right engines. And now the engine's restarted and we can continue on our way. So now that we've seen a good restart, we'll look at a bad restart causing a fire and how to recover from that. Alright, so in this example we're going to flame out the right engine and then restart it so we can cause an engine fire. So we pull the throttle back quickly to the idle position and we can see the engine beginning its process of flaming out. Let me pull the throttle back further to the cutoff position and then we're ready to perform a quick restart of the engine. So I'm not going to care about the criteria we talked about before, I'm just going to go for the restart so I'm going to push in that ignition switch and hold it. Then we're going to watch the EGT for that rise, telling us the engine is beginning to restart. Then instead of doing it correctly, I'm just going to get that throttle and jam it all the way forward as fast as I can. And you see, EGT spikes, the German guy complains about the fire, so now we're going to put it out. So I cut off the throttle, push the nose over, and I'm going to do full left rudder with right aileron for a forward slip. Once we exceed about 500 km per hour, you have a chance of putting out the fire, then you can recover. Now that fire has caused some damage, so you're not going to get the full power out of it anymore, however you can attempt to restart it if you want. So I'm going to bring the nose up, start slowing down, click the ignition switch and hold it. See the EGT will come up. So now we're going to slowly increase the throttle and manage that EGT to keep it below 900 degrees at least. So it spiked really high, so I didn't even move it again. As it starts falling away, then you can start increasing the throttle again. So it starts falling, you can start increasing it. And you want to get to the point where it's going to click, telling us we're at that idle position. And it's coming up now. So now it's in the idle position, we can release the ignition button, and then increase the throttle to match if you can. But at the very least, you'll be producing some thrust on that engine to help you get back to base. So that completes the video on how to deal with engine fires and restarts in the Message 262. If you liked it, be sure to share it with your friends and become a subscriber. And as always, don't forget to fly safe and check your six.